Welcome to Savvy Sabs Podcast. I'm your host, Sabrina Salvati. My special guest today is Brandon James Griffin. He is challenging Elizabeth Warren, and he is running third party through the Workers Party of Massachusetts. Welcome, Brandon, and thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Sabrina. What's happening? What is going on? So really interesting. I was excited to hear that someone is challenging Elizabeth Warren. Um, I've been saying for quite some time, I wish someone would, uh, but I think it's great that you're challenging her uh, as, as a third party candidate. So first and foremost, I want to hear a little bit about yourself. Why did you decide uh, to challenge Elizabeth Warren and why did you decide to do so uh, as a third party candidate? Uh, well, I am a member of the Workers' Party in Massachusetts, and we are adamantly against ever running under any other banner. We are a political party. Uh, if I wanted to run as a Democrat, I would not be welcome in the Workers' Party, and that's just how I like it. Uh, third parties are looked at in several different ways, but it's the only way to use political power to back up street progress. Uh, so mass movements mean nothing when any change happens, they can just immediately be re re reversed by the people in power, the ruling class the, and the legislative class. So gains made in the street need to be protected by leftists that are in power, in, in political power which at some point it would be great to not need political power. But for now, that's how it goes. So yeah, um, I decided to run as a third party candidate. The Workers Party in Massachusetts nominated me to do so. Um, and it's important because there needs to, these people need to be checked and we need to put dents in their numbers to make them look at us with not just a smirk, but a cockeyed smirk, like, oh, wait a minute. And, um, and yeah, first off, too, I mean, the, isn't this exciting? We've got Claudia De La Cruz, Karina Garcia. We've got three other Workers' Party candidates. The Socialist Party is, is running presidential candidates. I don't believe they're shooting for ballot access in mass. I haven't seen them where we've collaborated with some of Claudia's canvassers. So um, yeah, this is, this is an exciting time in the midst of a terrible time. Why particularly uh, did you decide to challenge Elizabeth Warren? What is it about uh, her activity uh, in the Senate that has uh, bothered you? I have my own opinions, but uh, I wanna hear well, about- Well, uh, uh, she's a warmonger and she's a Zionist. She's a fraud. I will give her credit for one thing. She's a great actress. <laughs> um, it, it would have been the same if if it were Marky. Uh, it you know it, it isn't necessarily targeting Liz Warren. It's just this is the year that she's up for, for uh, re-election. And, and believe me, we'll be going after Marky too when he's up. Um, mm -hmm. But she bothers me for a many 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 reasons. Um, mostly because she treats our state as if Boston and Cambridge are the only parts of our state. When in fact, the suburbs and Western Mass, uh, Central Mass, you never hear anybody talking about Worcester. You never hear anybody talking about Springfield, Holyoke, New Bedford, Brockton, Fall, Fall River, Lawrence, Lowell. It's always just pandering to her base, which is Cambridge, Boston, Somerville, Newton, Wellesley. And that's not Massachusetts. That's wealthy liberals. That's not who we are. And um, no. the people in Massachusetts need to be united as a working class, not united as ideological leftists that want to bicker about Trotsky. I, I don't care about any of that. Um, we are looking to use this platform and our party program, which is straightforward, digestible, 
and not really open for interpretation is we are for the working class. We are not out handpicking socialists who look cool and who do things that might be uh, a little flashy or extravagant or, you know, the charismatic folks. We want to build working class power. We don't want to be looked at as the best leftist group. I hate that competition. Sectarianism is pointless. Um, but yeah, Liz Warren, back, back to your point, Liz Warren is problematic in the same way that Bernie Sanders is problematic, the same way that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is problematic, is that they've sold their label to the places where they live where that label is desirable. Uh, the term progressive means nothing. It's a sales pitch. If you're a Democrat, you're a Democrat and you fall in line, and they all do. And we're in the midst of an international crisis. Um, right now, the focus should be on Palestine, and it has been. And I am so thrilled to spend at least one or two Saturdays or Sundays a month with not just the Workers' Party, but some liberal groups like Jewish Voice for Peace, and to just have the sound truck uh, going. We had Claudia on our sound truck with the Workers' World Party signs, Workers' Party signs, all the PSL folks, and it was just pure left unity. And that is what we need to target these people as opposed to leftist infighting. Uh, I think we're in a place and a time where the conditions are right for the left to finally just be the left. And, well said. Um, yeah, I, I was going to say uh, it is a very uh, particular issue here in states like Massachusetts and also New York, where politicians tend to pretend as though uh, the only city that is in Massachusetts or the only area is that Boston area, the Boston, Cambridge, Somerville area. Same thing I noticed with New York State as well. The primary focus tends to be on New York City. Uh, New York is a big state. There's a lot more to the state than just New York City. Same thing with Massachusetts. You are correct. Uh, it's like the entire, the majority of the, of the state is forgotten about. Uh, Boston, while it's the biggest city in Massachusetts, Worcester is the second largest city. Then you also have Springfield. Uh, yep. So there's the Berkshires. There's a whole different part to the state that is often neglected. And I feel like politicians really do pretend as if those people are not a part of the state. So thank you so much for bringing that up. No problem at all. Yeah, it's... um. I'm 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 feeling very optimistic right now about the state of not just um you know straight up socialists in general but even you know I'm happy when DSA shows up I'm happy when CPUSA shows up and there may be some ideological differences there um it that aren't even worth getting into anymore because if things go the right way the left can unite and at least try and keep pace with what the far right wing has done, which, uh, which of course is reactionary dog whistles. But even even that type of um, propaganda campaigns that they run, it's the same ex it's the same exploitation. The people they're grifting are working class people, and right. it's not. It's not fair to characterize voters in the same group as influencers, people with power, and politicians. You know, you say, oh, yeah, the Republicans, that will trigger conservatives to get pissed off. But it's we're talking about the party. When we say the Democrats, we're not talking about liberals, we're talking about the party. If we're talking about liberals, we'll say liberals. If we're talking about conservatives, we'll say conservatives. But most of them are working class people that are angry and the first message that gets to them that resonates is the one that they're going to run with. So we can't blame conservatives and we can't blame 
liberals for following and swallowing the BS that CNN and Fox spits out. Even even some of the you know pseudo left YouTube channels um, and and the and the populist uh, YouTube channels. I promise I wouldn't talk trash about anyone, but I'm going to talk trash about Jimmy Dory. He's the worst <laughs> because he is so good at manipulating po people that are politically green but are ready to take a leap to you know start probably getting into socialism where instead they fall into this populist trap where it just makes everybody just slide back to the right the, the mm. populism is dangerous whether or not we take Jimmy Dory at his word that he's just a dumb stoned comedian. People like that are dangerous. Um, everybody knows who Alex Jones is, what he is all about. I'm not going to bother talking about him, but people like Jimmy Dory and Jackson Hinkle are dangerous to the left because they're really populist and they're nationalists. Interesting. Why do you think popular? Well, what do you think about, uh, for example, uh, a show like Breaking Points, uh, where they're talk about right populism and left populism? Uh, Crystal and Sager wrote a book uh, about populism. Uh, do you think that's still dangerous as well? I, yes, populism is dangerous because it's not fully analyzed under conditions. It's targeted to temporary conditions and it can change on a on a whim. I mean Bernie Sanders is a is a populist. And it's it but uh I don't watch much breaking point. So I, I don't really have a take on that. Um I don't have much time to watch anything <laughs> right 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 now. Uh, I caught up on y your episodes. I watch um I like when Second Thought will drop something. I really, really like that channel. Uh, he's very accessible, and he and it's out there, and he makes things make sense in a very simple yeah. way. Uh, yeah. But besides that, uh, I'm not on I'm not on YouTube all that much. I just wanted to point that out because anyone out there that hears this, don't listen to Jimmy Dory, please. He is not a leftist. He doesn't understand politics. He understands. <laughs> what people are mad about. There were people waving Russian flags at his rally and all it's just you know. <laughs> but um well, I want to talk about positive stuff. Well there is a segment of the left that feels that you know they they do stand with Russia that they feel that Russia has been wrongfully scrutinized. There is a, a segment of the left that does feel like the media, and I've talked about this as well, how the media will intentionally uh, lie about Russia and yes. China, not just not just Russia, but Russia and China. And I agree with that. It's the the propaganda campaign against Russia is as I mean is older than me. Uh, same with China. Um, I will never say that I support Russia. Russia is a capitalist country. I, 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 and we don't support a capitalist country, but we support the working class in, in, in Russia who are also, who are part of any exploitation that the rest of the international world is, sub, is subjected to. And I don't think that, how can I put this? Um, Ukraine and NATO are to blame. For this i do not blame russia i don't support them but i don't this is not they warned us for 10 years that this was going to happen and then we just started it was like we were egging them on with our with our media we were like oh putin's doing this putin's doing that oh there's tanks let's give all the money to ukraine instead of uh, fixing homelessness so um hmm. It's it's the imperialist aspect from the West that I have have a problem with in the in the Russia Ukraine conflict. NATO wasn't supposed to expand, and they did. What's Putin going to do? Right, right. 
that well, little piece there. Well, like I said, I, I don't support their economy or their politics, but what happened is NATO and the West. And I think even Ukraine had some puppeteers. So, but I just think waving the Russian flag and like that kind of stuff, that populism isn't productive. You know, and, and that was just one thing that I saw in that uh, Rage Against the War Machine rally that really pissed me off because it's sending the wrong message. You're waving a flag of a capitalist country. We don't need that. Well, what if that person that was waving that, fra that flag was Russian? That's fine. But I still don't think that we should be seeing that in that type of rally. There shouldn't be flags. It should be an anti-war rally. Make it an anti-war rally. Interesting. Well, let's dive into uh, your website here. Uh, it says Brandon James Griffin, the working class needs a workers party. And one of the things that you did address here, uh, you have your campaign announcement, but then you go on to, let me actually make this bigger because the font is very, very tiny. One of the things that you mentioned here about what the Democratic Party has has done and also the Republican Party. In the past six years alone, the Republican and Democrat duopoly as represented by Donald Trump, Joe Biden, and in Massachusetts, Elizabeth Warren have worked together to mismanage a global pandemic costing millions of lives, intervene in labor disputes on behalf of the capitalist class and against the workers, uh, continue funding NATO aggression in Ukraine and the U.S. imperialist war machine. The Workers' Party of Massachusetts has entrusted me to deliver our message and represent our goals for a revolutionary transformation of society. Another thing that's interesting here, and I want to pick your brain a little bit here about the workers, uh, because there have been a number of people actually applauding Joe Biden um, for the NLRB and, and workers' rights, although they seem to be forgetting that Joe Biden actually disrupted the railroad workers strike, right? So there was that. Uh, yes, he was endorsed by the UAW, uh, but these unions are paid to endorse candidates. And Sean, uh, the, the president of the UAW actually said so himself that mm -hmm. his his members were not going to vote for Joe Biden. So, so oh. there's that. And I think this is a big wake up call when you talk about like the working class and fighting for the workers, what does that look like for you? If you were in Congress, if you were in Elizabeth Warren's position, how would you have voted in reference to some of these pieces of legislation that greatly impact the workers? Well, when uh, let's let's put the umbrella up and just, you know, let's just pretend I'm actually sitting there. Um, the power that you hold in those type of settings is more minimal than they allow you to believe what their power is. And I think that you need to be disruptive to make a point. You can't just say, okay, there's, there's two garbage decisions. Am I going to say yes to garbage one or yes to garbage two? You need to make, you need to stall and be loud and make sure the media hears it. And if the media ignores you, you can run out front with a megaphone and say it. Um, what they did with the railroaders was disgusting. And I'm not knocking Sean Payne, but the fact that he acknowledged that and still did it was a, was a bit weird. Uh, we supported UAW. We were in Mansfield. We were there at night. We were there during the day. We brought coffee. We brought, we brought drinks down at, down at uh, the Stellantis picket. And I mean, we knew it was going to happen, but I'm just waiting for that first union bureaucrat to step up and even give a non-endorsement. Um, I don't expect non, now I'm, I'm discussing bureaucrats, not the rank and file. The rank and file is, is, our, is our people. Um, but the first big union that comes out and does a non-endorsement for Joe Biden, and I'm not talking about them then endorsing Trump. I'm saying I want one of them to come out and say, we're not picking either of them. They're both terrible. Right. Once someone does that, I believe there will be a domino effect. Because if, if their union is not affected negatively by that statement, I believe a lot of them will follow suit. I'm looking at the MTA. 
I'm looking, and I'm and I'm not a union member, so I don't know exactly what what goes on in in some of those meetings. But I know that there's a lot that isn't that isn't happening right now that should be. But the labor movement has picked up, and that is another positive. That's another positive to the left, to the left standing together with labor organizers, even if they are Democrats or even if they are liberals. Um, nobody is beyond uh, is beyond use. You can't blame workers for not digging through political ideology and reading long-winded books because everybody's is too tired. It's right. we're all we're all exhausted and. I think putting blame on workers because of how they vote is a short-sighted criticism that needs to stop, but it doesn't need to stop in the sense of stop educating. And the Workers' Party of Massachusetts is really big on in your face, this is what we think. People communicate with memes and pictures nowadays. It's, it's, our, it's our new language. And we don't hide our politics we're not coy with our politics you know we don't go oh we're you know we support the scandinavian stuff no we're socialists and everything that comes with it right right and the um the ebb and flow of things right now may not may not be a majority but it's heading in that direction uh and we need to get gen z to not completely give up hope with the pile of with the mess that we've left for them and got and people gen z i'm sorry <laughs> you know um well, we need to get them to vote and to become organized in the street because right. they are maybe our last hope to even save the, the planet i um i need to push more urgency on climate but I am not educated enough on it to speak candidly to be effective. Um, I'm working on learning more about climate issues, but I know the basics and I know that that's maybe an even more existential threat than our political system here and internationally, because when you have no plan, you have no politics. That's right, well said. <laughs> Do you feel that Elizabeth Warren at this point in time represents her constituents? And I, I, I personally feel that there is a certain demographic that she is catering to. I feel like, especially in Cambridge, there's a lot of academic elite because we have MIT and we have Harvard both in Cambridge. I feel like mm -hmm. that's the population. I feel like uh, more wealthier people that are part of that population. And for a while, she had a pretty strong base with uh, younger voters, college students, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm not so sure how that is today, given her response in reference to the war on Gaza. Um, her response has been, I mean, <laughs> I can't use a lot of the words right now that I want to use <laughs> to describe it. I'm going to try and be classy here. Um, she's losing the youth because the youth are very tuned in and they are very anti-war. And her facade of being this progressive darling is falling. So instead of her chasing to get it back, what she's doing is doing what Mara Healy already does, which is concede to the right. Right. And I think that that's really the whole um, Democratic Party as a whole is conceding to the right because all all these all these people care about all they have to do is get reelected. This is their job. They make their living doing nothing in Washington D.C. Why would you give that up? And, you know, you've got strategists and staffers and media and I don't look too much at open secrets because I don't I don't want to bore people with all the details of how much money they got from Raytheon, how much money they got from Boeing, uh, how I many do. planes I'm not getting on in the next month. 
<laughs> um, but we all we all know that that's that's what happens, and they all belong to corporations. Corporations all belong to like fifteen dudes. So you know, uh, everybody knows it. Nobody knows how to fix it. So what's the plan to get you on the ballot? Because I know as a third party candidate, uh, you have to gather a certain number of signatures. How is that going? How is the signature uh, drive going? And and where are you going to go from there? Uh, sure. Yep. Ballot access is a huge problem for third parties in general across the across the board, not just here in Mass. Massachusetts is actually not that bad. It's it's 10,000 certified. Um, we have our teams out. It's almost all, it's almost all party members. Uh, and it's a, it's a grind. It's not easy. Um, we did it in 2022 with a statewide candidate, Nick Giannone ran for state auditor and we started the campaign late and that's only 5,000. But, um, but we, but we got it done in a couple months. It was that horrible summer where, where it was like 90 degrees for six weeks. And we were out there every day. We probably looked, <laughs> we probably looked like maniacs to people, but, but we did it and we'll get this done. But it's a hindrance because it stops us from campaigning. Right. And it's also ableist, which is really aggravating. Well, are, you're it, looking for volunteers, correct? Absolutely always looking for volunteers. Um, you can sign up actually on my site. It's um, BJ Griffin from Mass. And you, you can use the Nation Builder one, which will post, you know, like uh, I, I can send you all of the direct links, but it's right in the menu. It'll just say signature gathering volunteers and you can sign up and I'll get right back to you, whether it's I mail you one sheet and you send it back to me with your signature on it, or you go out to stop and shop and collect 20 and uh, mail it back. The small numbers are what get us there. It's, it's, it isn't the big drives. Um, we need that extra two to 3,000, and that's the small numbers where that comes from. Some people can't go out and physically do it. So... Some of those folks will make a donation or spread the word to their friends or, but the ballot access is a huge problem for third parties. I know Claudia and Karina, we were, we were out with them um, this, this past weekend, Claudia was, was on the sound truck, which was awesome at the uh, pro-Palestine rally at Copley. And a couple of weeks before, PSL's canvassers were with us in Braintree at the weekly rally there on, on Sundays. So it's really, really cool. And it's really, really encouraging to see not just a presidential candidate from an, from an actual socialist organization. They are running as open socialists. And... And then you have you have myself who's running for the federal seat as an as an open socialist. And I watched your interviews with the Socialist Party candidates and Claudia and and Claudia and Karina. And I'm sure that you will be picking up on a lot of very similar responses. PSL's program has a lot of the same type of things that the Workers' Party program has. And that's a good thing. And I am so looking forward to more collaboration with them. Um, we just endorsed them. We, we uh, voted last week unanimously to endorse, to endorse uh, Claudia Karina 24. Um, very happy we took that route. And I think it's going to be an interesting summer. I haven't been attacked yet. Um, so that's good. I haven't had any, haven't had too many, um, interactions where operatives or, you know, DNC people are trying to smear us or, or what not. Maybe it's because I'm a nice person. I, I don't know. Um, but we've been able to avoid that 
but it's very encouraging right now to see all this political act activity without losing a step in the streets, which is so important. We can never forget who we really are. Politics back up mass mass movements. They do not start them. Right. Right. That is that is very important for people to understand. Yes. Very important. So uh, I would love to stay informed about other events and rallies that are coming up. I, I wasn't aware of the PSL event that happened recently, but I'm kind of all over the place, to be honest with you, Brandon. Uh, but uh, definitely keep me informed about any other events or rallies that are coming up. Also, um, I'll be sure to shout it out on the show as well for people who are in the area and want to volunteer. Um, I can also discuss this with the RBN Boston chapter when we meet on Sunday as well, because uh, yeah. I know people are looking for ways to get involved uh, politically. But I think that a lot of us need to put more focus on what's happening locally, uh, where we can actually help. A lot of times, I think most of us that have participated in like these presidential uh, campaigns where we've been volunteers, we know a lot of the times like you just you don't even get to talk to the person, the candidate that's actually running. Right. So right. I think that you see more interaction when you're helping with these local campaigns, in my experience. Oh, absolutely. Yep. And um, and we are running state candidates as well, uh, which which is also an effective strategy because you don't have, you know, it won't just be my name on the Senate ballot. It'll be our candidates names in addition to mine. So you'll see the Workers Party name and everyone who votes. And it's a weird it's a weird feeling because I'm not I'm not a politician. Um, I'm playing one this year. I, I, I ran in 2022 and got, uh, I, I got 25% of the vote as an open socialist in Jeff Deal's hometown in the, in the, in the state rep race where the Democrats didn't run anyone because, um, they often concede where they don't know where they don't think they'll win, which I think is kind of yep. pathetic. Um, but that's not my business. That's theirs. I don't control their party. I don't care what they do. Um, I ran because it was an unopposed race and I find unopposed races unacceptable. It's, it's sad that someone walks in office. Um, so, yeah. but yes, uh, I, I am trying right now to make people not just pay attention and to educate them and to join a socialist organization, whether it be Party for Socialism and Liberation, a lot of it is where you live. Uh, we have locals in Cambridge, which is brand new. We have the Foxborough area, that's called the stadium area, where we have two candidates that will be on all those ballots in Attleboro, which is Laura Saylor and Andrew Nelson. And, in, and out in Western Mass, it's John Rivera. He's running for state Senate out in the Springfield Holyoke area, then of course myself. And um, we are all for people joining, just join a socialist organization, the closest, the one that makes the most sense. Um, it's really, the Workers' Party is non-sectarian. We push non-sectarianism and we encourage engagement in any way. If it doesn't grow our party and it grows PSL, great awesome they're great organizers you know and awesome. i i look forward to seeing how this all plays out i am very very curious to see what it, how much of a dent we can put in biden and warren's vote awesome well brandon i am thrilled that you are challenging elizabeth warren and i look forward to hearing more from you thank you so much for your time oh thank you sabrina we will talk soon